Hey, you're watching Soul State. I'm D Cup, now known as Rumble Man. And today I'm going to tell you how Yolanda B. Cool and I accidentally wrote a worldwide hit. The, the session itself was is ridiculously simple and I don't have it still today, but it's not that it's not that detailed or anything. I think this is the perfect example of an organic number one hit, right? So Yolanda Be Cool is two guys, Matt and Andrew. The very start of the process was an email from Yolanda, you know, demo one. It was really basically just a bed, you know, it was sort of like drums and a hi-hat and this loop. They came by and we spent literally just two or three days, just a few hours each day. We were aiming for a, a sort of underground club track. On the last day, one of the two Yolanda guys just asked me, is there anything different we could do in the last breakdown? And at that point we didn't have the main saxophone hook yet. So I just scratched my head and I said, maybe I'll just chop a bit of the sample where there's some saxophone and just play that over the sampler on my keyboard. And that was going to be the outro. And <laughs> rightly so, Matt from Yolanda said, listen, this is way too good to just be the outro. This has to be the main hook for the whole thing. So I think that was really what turned it from what could have been just an underground track, which we'd intended to what was number one in all these European countries. And this is the drop that everyone knows. <laughs> But I guess Matt's genius comes in knowing as soon as he heard that, that was going to dominate the track. It was sort of too good just to throw in tack on the end. Without that last minute hook idea of the saxophone, it would have dropped in basically just sounding like the intro with a bass line. Still, when we wrote that hook, we didn't think it was going to be as big as it was, but the other owner of the label at the time, very like, very good at taste making and seeing trends. And he instantly just said, Jesus, this is going to be massive. And we're like, you sure about that? Like, I really respect you. Um, but I still didn't believe him a hundred percent. We hadn't cleared the sample at that point. Again, no expectations of it being so, Im so impactful. And we just released it. And then obviously we saw it taking off. So post releasing we cleared the sample we sort of ran to the italian major label and said listen this this is taking off do you can we can we work something out so we worked something out they they definitely made a lot of money off it but we also made some money from it as well it was still mutually beneficial we were just having fun and i think if we'd overthought it too much where if we thought oh this is going to be huge should we pull out the sample and re-record the parts and all that jazz maybe it wouldn't have been what it was at the end of the day no one really cares that much you know if it's if it's a fun song and people enjoy it then you've done something right the release strategy was zero was zilch it was just like put it out there no marketing no nothing the whole of that year it was just this kind of it would get onto another continent and then it would just go crazy there and the people who had licensed it in the uk they made a, an expensive film clip for it and said we kind of make it seem vintage kind of like the sound of the song we said cool whatever sounds good that is kind of my philosophy is just make sure that the music rocks you know all of your advertising and your social media presence won't really count for shit if your song is not very good working with them made me realize that as comfortable as i am with music theory and now with the sort of technical side of producing i don't have what they have and i've been trying to teach myself that which is the ability just to shut off like the rational technical brain and just go is that cool or is that not cool do i vibe with that or do i not vibe with that but definitely that's how i've always thought and that's how i've always approached it what is my job <clears throat> essentially the job I've assigned to myself is DJ. The goal of the music that I write is to play to a group of people and to change their mood in some way that I think of as positive. So whenever I get in the studio, the question is, would I play this? Would this be the track of the night or would it at least be close? Yeah, we have 
uh, number ones in it was 10 European countries or eight European countries or something like that and went yeah definitely multiple times platinum it was so rewarding to have my musical love and dedication come to some like massive fruition out of nowhere I think the most important lesson that comes from Americano we're never the best judge of our own work that very specific ear that makes us really good at details and makes us terrible at the big picture. There is no right and wrong when it comes to, is this a good song or bad song? Everyone's going to react to it differently. Once the track is basically finished, mixed and mastered, stop judging it and just (laughs) chuck it out there. Just go, listen, that felt good. That felt good putting it down. I finished it. It's arranged and it's mixed. Now is the time for someone else to judge it. Many other people to go and judge it. It's not my turn anymore. So Decup is uh, semi-retired, not making music anymore. I'm going to be releasing music very soon as Rumble Man. Just keep an eye on Rumble Man. That's that's where you'll uh, see the next whatever. Papa, la